First of all, everyone has to wear BDSM leather. Mandated uh, uniform just to be a citizen of the world. Um, and then after that, everyone must make me pie. Casey Nestor, and you are watching Question Time with Casey and Devin. <laughs> still working on that. We're still, you know, this is only episode four. Still haven't gotten all of our shit together. So, you know what? We'll, we'll keep working on that, Devin. Uh, so, wow. We uh, went with a very similar attire today. Yeah. Yeah, it literally looks like your shirt got uh, inverted and then became another shirt. And now that's what I'm wearing. No, your shirt looks like it became inverted and became another shirt, and now that's what I'm wearing. Oh, oh <laughs> that makes infinitely more sense to me. I yeah, wish. yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but uh, hey, man, uh, so Question Time with Casey and Devin featuring the Mingo Haunt Gang was considered one of our best episodes yet. Uh, so I... You know, I have a lot of thanks to give to all the people that watched it and enjoyed that episode. Uh, it's been a good two weeks since we've done one of these, so it's uh, great to be back with you. And we also had a very successful uh, podcast the other day that was also one of the better ones we've done. So if you guys haven't checked those out, go ahead and check those things out. They're on my channel. <laughs> Just <laughs> love them, you know. Uh, also, if you guys haven't already, go ahead and uh, subscribe to the Nestor Network and hit that gray bell icon and you will be notified whenever we launch a new video. It could be Casey's Corner Podcast. It could be Question Time with Casey and Devin, your up and coming show, Devin's Den, uh, The Turnbuckle with Casey Nestor and uh, various other shows will be coming at you guys. So, Devin. Let's uh, just go ahead and dive right into this. You know, it's been two weeks. I've had a good uh, opportunity to pick through some of these questions, and I have some interesting ones lined up for us today. So the first question comes from my grandma. She uh, submitted some questions in today. Oh, uh, she, she wants to know how you would change the world. Me. How I would change the world. Oh, Casey's grandma. What a sweet, innocent question. All right. First of all, everyone has to wear BDSM leather. Oh. oh. Man mandated uh, uniform just to be a citizen of the world. Um, and then after that, everyone must make me pie. That's pretty much it. No, I'm just kidding. I don't know. If I could change the world, I would develop a more integrated global economy. Mm-hmm. That way, everyone could, in some form, receive the resources or products they so want or desire. Think like I don't know how to say this, but 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 in a way that it wouldn't be controlled all by one person, so it couldn't be like monopolized or oligarchized or anything like that. How about you, Casey? Does erase hate count? You know, just like kind of get rid of is hate that, altogether. Is that so wait, it's a, that's for, so I consider that you know either something that'll happen when we're so enlightened that we realize that hate is useless and evil, or impossible. So are we allowed to do things that are just like boom and like potentially? But I don't know. But erasing hate like that though, like would that really? I don't want to say be worth it, but like doesn't that? Isn't hate what makes love so much better, like, when you do find it? Because you know there's so much hate in the world, so, like, it kind of adds to it. It's kind of like that whole uh, thing, like, where you work so hard to get something or to get to a certain point in your life. So when you finally achieve it, you know all the work that went into it, so it feels that much better, right? So that's kind of how it is with the whole hate thing. There's so much hate in the world when you finally find, like... Uh, things you love or people who love you like it feels that much better because you know what surrounds you uh so i don't necessarily think i would erase that i think um i would erase currency everything would just be free we would live in a society where uh, you know you take what you need you don't need the extra shit if you want something you just got that something if you need something you got it you walk into a grocery store 
there's no uh, gluttony, you know, or gluttony. What is it? Gluttony or glut <laughs> gluttony? Yeah, gluttony. Uh, so there's no gluttony. Like you go and you only take what you need. You're not taking a bunch of extra shit. You you just take what you need. And to me, that would lead to a better world. You know, they do that shit in Star Trek. There is no currency like on Earth. They just everyone has what they need. All right. So two things. One, gluttony is what people with celiac disease call uh, call gluttony. But two, um, yeah. But okay. So how do you define me? Food, uh, beds, uh, shelter, you know, stuff like that. Right, right, but you don't need, like, mac and cheese to live. So does mac and cheese just stop being uh-huh. made at all? Or, like, do we only have food that produces the nutrients to sustain the human life and then nothing is created beyond that? Like, how do you define need? Like what you need to survive, you know, nutritional values. And so would it be the case that like people could only take X amount of calories worth of food per let's say week? Maybe. I mean, I don't even want to say like you get vouchers. Cause if you get vouchers, that kind of defeats the whole point of money. Right. Or like not having the money. Cause it's like, now it's just vouchers. Yep. Cause that's still currency. Do you think we could live in a world without currency? We used to, right? But it sucked, and here's why. Um, instead of having to drag a cow to a marketplace, right? I'd rather sell the cow for $20 and then take $20 to the marketplace because it's a fuck ton later than a cow, you know? Yeah. Um, and and trade is more difficult to regulate than currency. How so? so? Because... Right now, um, we have a system where there are a bunch of different currencies in the world, and based off of how well the different economies are doing, they all have a different worth, right? Um, Mm -hmm. And so trade between nations can happen fairly easily because you can uh, determine an exchange rate. We have exchange rates. Currency has exchange rates. Um, If it was all person-by-person based, Like, I don't know, you'd have to have, instead of just an exchange rate for currencies, you'd have to have an exchange rate for American chickens versus English chickens or, you know, uh, Middle Eastern cows versus Indian cows, which, by the way, Indian cows are going to be really fucking expensive. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. I'm sorry. So a world without currency seems pretty non-existent. Only because I'm an economist. If you asked anyone else this question, they probably... I wouldn't have nearly as much of a problem with it. It's one of my character flaws, honestly. Oh, okay. Whatever. (laughs) (laughs) So, I still think it would make the world a better place. No currency. You just kind of take what you need. That's just my opinion. What if you just take what you need? Yeah, yeah, that that could work too. Well, you smoking a fucking blue over there? (laughs) Am I allowed to show brand names on here? Sure. Yeah, go for it. I don't care. I sure am smoking a blue. Oh, thing. man. I, I haven't seen a blue forever. High school days, man. High school days. Yeah. <laughs> uh. <laughs> right. Oh, my God. But um, what ha- happened was a friend of mine, a friend of ours, Anita, um, wanted me to quit smoking. A lot of people want me to quit smoking, but Anita was like, listen, motherfucker, I work at like a, a tobacco outlet type store they sell a bunch of other stuff too but they sell a lot of tobacco and she was like and i see how poorly cigarettes affect people's health over the years of them coming in and how they're just dying and continuing to smoke and she was like you're already doing stuff to not die why don't you just do like one more thing to not die and i really couldn't argue with that so she gave me this for free and i promised i would try it and the nicotine level is really low right i don't know why i'm like reviewing this right now don't this episode of Question Time is not sponsored by Blue. But, um, um, and I've done this before, you know, I've gotten off of cigarettes with vaping before, so it was no big deal. But, like, the first day, I was crushing it because it comes with these tiny little fucking pods. And then I, like, went through a whole one in one day. And this one, I, this is day two, and it's still almost full. So I'm even slowing down on this. So I think it's working. Whether or not I'll be lighting up a cigarette come time for the Super Show, who knows? Because that's going to be a whole thing in and of itself but uh we'll we'll find out 
yeah, on Saturday. Super show. Saturday, super show. Ooh, ooh. Yeah, that's exciting. All right, let's uh, move on because we're getting a little bit off topic here. Uh, the next one comes from Jonas, first time asker. Uh, he wants to know, this one's very interesting, and it was directed when we had someone else here as well. But um, what made you guys want to stop your drinking and or drug habits? Oh, man. Um, uh, unmanageability. Unmanageability? I needed, yeah, I needed control back right i had a lack of control um the idea for me was you know turning um turning the fears i had about certain things right and and into courage um the restrictions i had in my life into the freedom and uh the isolation that i was doing into a more open loving atmosphere which is something that i've always wanted uh i just really got away from it because of my use and I was doing some things that I'm not so proud of. So the best way to, to stop those things, right. Is to stop using. And that's what I did. So just like that. No, not just like, that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you made you made it sound pretty simple. That's why I'm like, so just like that. No. Oh uh, yeah. Definitely took a rigid, uh, it's been so next week will be four months mm. but i'm not gonna have, so i'm not gonna be in a program anymore next week today's last well, tomorrow's the last day of that because i'm starting another chapter in my life which is there great. will be a parade of hand jobs and unicorns at uh your last day I'd maybe, rather just, maybe not the hand jobs yeah i'd rather just take the unicorns honestly right. <laughs> for me something more than a hand job <laughs> Yeah, hand jobs suck, by the way, but that's a topic for a different time. Um, okay, what what made me uh, want to kick my uh, drinking problem? Well, you know, it never really was a problem. I mean, it might have been a problem, but I never really <laughs> admitted it was a problem. It was always, um, I enjoyed going out and drinking every now and then. Um, never really knew when to stop when I started. Usually would black out somewhere and wake up somewhere different. I should have uh, changed my ways the day I took a piss on my buddy's couch and didn't remember it. Uh, but, you know, <laughs> the heartbreak led to a two-month drinking bender. And uh, towards the end of that, I woke up feeling shitty as always. And I kind of had that moment of self-reflection. And it's weird because you don't think of self-reflection in the physical sense, right? But it was literally me staring into a fucking mirror. And I'm like, who are you anymore? You know, like this started off as just like a fun thing. Uh, going out with friends, you're uh, having a good time, having the occasional beer. And now like because of this uh, terrible thing that's happened in your life, you're, uh, you know, you're drowning your fucking sorrows. Like, who are you? This isn't you. And I, I realized I was like being really out of character. And when I was drinking, I was messaging people I shouldn't have been messaging, saying things I shouldn't have been saying. Like, I remember one time I was messaging someone saying, the fucking end of the world is upon us, and, <laughs> like, all this other random ass shit. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, I got tired of waking up in the morning and writing apologies to people. That got really old really quick, and I just wanted to stop. I stopped and it was pretty rough for the first couple of weeks, you know, like your body gets used to alcohol when you're drinking for so long and it was pretty tough for me. And I promised, you know, since that day, I would never, you know, like I have no problem going back and drinking again, but I promised myself I would never drink out of sadness again. I would only drink when it, uh, you know, when it was in time for celebration or to have a good time, but never, you know, like if I was sad, I swore like I would not, you know, touch alcohol anymore. And I haven't. I drank on St. Patty's Day. That was the last time I drank since. And, you know, I was a little concerned that that would uh, send me back into a spiral, you know, another bender. And I have Crown Royal sitting in my fridge right now. And once again, I haven't touched it since um, 
since St. Patty's Day. So just wanting to be a better person ultimately made me uh, want to kick that habit. See, that's good. That's nice. Especially because, like, the stuff you were doing was, like, I can see why that would be bad. But it could have been worse. Well, I think things would have resulted differently had I not gone into that drinking uh, bender as well. Like, I think I could have resolved some other things that I wasn't able to resolve while I was intoxicated for two months straight. You know, but uh, I I feel like if I were sober, I I could have changed some shit. But also, like, that bender taught me so much, and it ultimately led me on the right path. So, I don't regret it. it. It was just something I needed. And you shouldn't regret it, because like you said, it led to where you are now. And that's exactly. Important. That's important. Where you are now. Yeah. You have uh, anything else to say on the matter? No. Okay. Next one. This is going to be interesting. We could get some hate for this. Lay it on me. Okay. Episode three comes from my grandma again, and she episode wants to know what, in your opinion, is your favorite episode of Casey's Corner? Oh, boy. <laughs> I know. I'm just like, oh, shit. Ugh, oh, boy. There. My favorite episode of Casey's Corner. Come on, Grandma. Why you gotta do this? I don't know, Casey. You go first. What's your favorite episode? You gotta go first. Oh man, that's uh, that's rough. I can't. I can't narrow it down to like one. To be quite honest, I have three. I'll give three. But also, when I give this answer for those who are listening, I want you to realize something. These are my personal favorites. On where I feel like I said some of my strongest points and I just had a really good time ultimately, you know, and uh, it doesn't reflect on anyone else who hasn't made this list. You know, it doesn't reflect poorly onto you. Yes, it does. No, it does not. (laughs) My top three as of now uh, in uh, order at number three would probably be butters i had a lot of time doing that episode Uh, i think him and i did an awesome show and i definitely think it deserves you know in that top three spot number two would probably be donna joe kiss uh that girl you know like i really didn't have a lot of conversations with her beforehand uh and she came on the show and at about the hour and a half mark i'm like man we got something special going on right here like this is a good show and number one and I'm not trying to sound biased because you're right here, Devin, but it was that latest episode of Casey's Corner you and I did. That episode was just fire from beginning to end. We covered so many good topics. We covered touchy issues. We covered sad issues. We we had some good rants, <laughs> you know? So, like, that episode to me is my personal favorite as of right now. Yeah, I really, I really think you, you were shining in that episode. That was That was a good episode. Um, but I, it's funny because it does. It's on your list, but my favorite so far was the episode with Donna. That was a really last episode. Yeah, it was. It was. I watch. I try to watch all of them from beginning to end, and a lot of times I do. Sometimes I can't, not because I don't want to, but just because like I get in the middle of something and I forget, and then it's like there's two more episodes out, and I'm like, Casey, you make so much content. What the fuck? And but that was one that I was able. I, I was able to watch beginning and end to end, and it was fantastic. Uh, do you like have any like two more maybe? No, I don't. Don't you try to pressure me? That wasn't the question. <laughs> yeah, but I named three, so like you should name three. Uh, uh, the Super Show is gonna be number two, and then yeah, uh, I didn't. I didn't consider specials in mine. Otherwise, I would have said Super Show was like number one for me. All right. Well, fine. Am I not allowed to use that as an answer? Yeah, you're not allowed to because I wasn't allowed to. <laughs> Fine, bro. Um, let's see. Fuck. Oh, what was the one girl's name? Um, Tori. Yeah, Tori. That was a good one. Yeah, that was. And then, um, oh man, Vito was also good. That that, like, yeah, no, that was fantastic. Vito is good. Vito is good. And Dave Corona had a good episode. 
James is always good. Ali's always good. Eric and Kayla's yeah. always good. And that's why I'm like, who do I put on here? Right, like, yeah. what is happening? Uh, and then uh, there's one more. There was one more name when Dane had a good episode. Dane had an awesome episode. So, yeah, it's really, it's hard to, to yeah, make he, he threw me off. That was like five minutes in. And he's like, remember that one time I picked your buddy up, a hooker? And I'm like, Dane, what are you doing now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but anyway, I think they're all of the episodes of Casey's Corner are great because it's literally this dude who I enjoy talking to other people that I enjoy, and it's like you can't go wrong with that formula. Trust me, I'm a mathematician. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I've had I've had the occasional bad episode, but even the bad episodes I still think are solid. You know, all they right, name did... your oh. no, I'm not doing that. I'm not. <laughs> I refuse. <laughs> Way better question. Way better question. Inverse. Name nope. your least favorite episode of Casey's nope. Corner. I will not. I will not. <laughs> Come on, bro. I, I, think I, know. I think I know what it is. You you would not know what it is. You would not know what it is, honestly. Come but on, bro. I don't know. It, it was a pretty early episode. I will say that. All right. But that really doesn't narrow it down because I released so much at once. Giggity. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man. It, that's rough. I can't. That's like telling uh, which one of your children you like least. That's something you just don't do. Bullshit. Oh, you have, you have a favorite kid? No. <laughs> I only have you one have, kid. You have a least favorite kid. Let's inverse the question, Devin. <laughs> <laughs> Not how that works. <laughs> no, I, I love them all the same but different. There you go. These are my children. <laughs> Ooh, no, they're not. They're not my children, but still. They're all good. I, I like all my episodes. I you know, ultimately I don't release anything if I don't think it's good myself. I won't release it. Really? Yep. That's Devin gets the shock of his life when he realizes this episode of Question Time never gets aired. No, I'm joking. <laughs> Which, okay. <laughs> Let's move on, man. Uh, okay, we got question number four being asked from Riley Zook. Riley making her uh, return here. Riley, she wants yeah. to know. Bro. Riley is great with the questions. I agree. She wants to know what challenges do you think the next generation will have to face? And they're always crazy uh, intellectual questions like that she comes out with. It's like, chill, Riley. Oh, man. Ah, the next generation. Are we talking the generation after this youngest one? I call them the Snapchat generation because I don't remember the name of their generation. I think they're um, Gen Z. All right. So the one, at, the one that's coming up after them or Gen Z? I think we're talking about her generation, which would be Gen Z, yeah. The challenge, oh, so Gen Z, good luck figuring out um, how to stop working. Elaborate? Um, the way most businesses operate now, the way our retirement funds are looking, you know, it's going to be... <sighs> We're going to be lucky if we get to have a retirement, Casey. Um, and so Gen Z, unless some big changes are made in the next couple of decades, I think that's going to be an issue they face. Um, and then also, good luck paying for higher education, because unless that gets fixed, it's only going to get more expensive. Good luck buying property, because unless that somehow gets fixed, it's going to only be more expensive. And uh, good luck understanding your peers, because... Um, Sometimes that lingo is just dripping fresh, up, and I can't keep up. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Clear his throat. Yeet. <laughs> Precisely. Uh, okay, so for me, man, uh, right? So, yeah, words. Um, <laughs> no, anyway. So the thing I think that they're going to have the biggest uh, problem with in life is the the respect factor. You know, like when we were in school and shit, we had a lot of respect towards our elders. We had a lot of respect towards our peers. We had a lot of respect towards our teachers. Some of us didn't, you know, but for the most part, we respected one another. We knew what we wanted in life, and we, we tried to be supportive as possible towards each other. And 
I think that's just like something that the current generation really doesn't have. They don't really have that respect factor towards others. It's like all about them. It's like we're raising a uh, generation of narcissists and it's not all of them. I'm not I'm not saying all of you are uh, narcissistic or have narcissistic tendencies. I'm saying a lot of you do. Uh, I'm sure there's even someone watching this show right now who would be, uh, you know, considered to fall under those lines, which it's fine. It, it's, you know, it's perfectly OK to have those tendencies. It, it's what's more important is to see that you have those tendencies, reflect on it and want to change those tendencies and want to be a better person. But I think, you know, if you carry on living with that mentality, you're going to have a rude awakening, especially like when you graduate high school, you go out there, you try to get a job and you're going to realize that this, uh, you know, this manager or this owner isn't going to put up with your bullshit, the lack of respect. And then you're going to be bouncing from job to job. You're not going to be able to find a su suitable living situation because you're constantly picking fights with your landlord because you think the world revolves around you. You just need to get out of it now while you're young. Like the world is not going to revolve around you. You have to understand that you have to develop that respect towards others. That's and, what I think they're going to have the hardest time like facing personally. Yeah. And as evidence of your claim, Casey, I think we can all agree that the world revolves around me. So clearly it couldn't revolve around any of them. But, <laughs> but you know what? I think it's weird that you brought up the whole narcissism thing because that's true. It's, it's weird to me that their, their main form of social media is just like pictures that may or may not have a caption. You know what I mean? Like Snapchat is very like, I don't know, at its heart, I feel like it can breed narcissistic tendencies the same as Instagram, which is why, I, I mean, I don't know. I don't really fuck with either. Well, I, I don't care what anyone says. Everybody has some sort of narcissistic tendencies. Plain and simple. It, it's in everyone's DNA to be uh, to have that desire for people to kind of tell you, good job. I mean, that can even be considered a narcissistic tendency is to be told good job, you know, like because that that's that satisfaction you get from hearing someone else enjoying what you do. It's like that little bit of praise that kind of gets you by your day. Everyone likes being told good job or everyone likes being told they have a nice smile or, you know, nice shoes or whatever it may be. But like ultimately we all enjoy that shit and it's considered a narcissistic tendency. What's important is to not act on those tendencies and like go out there and be fishing for compliments or to have the mindset that the world revolves around you and that you're the only person in this world that fucking matters. Because guess what? You don't. You know, there's uh, over, what, 7 billion people on this planet and each one of those lives are just as important as yours. Maybe not everyone, you know, maybe maybe you have some uh, pool. You know, there are some shitty people in this world, but you understand what I'm saying for the most part. Uh, you just got to get out of that mindset. You need to understand that, um, that uh, you know, the world doesn't revolve around you. Well, no, see, Casey, uh, I agree with your statement, and I would take it one step further that every life does matter as much as everyone else's. Because even if people are shitty, the fact that they're still alive, there's just still a chance they can change, right? That's why, like... I was just to have the discussion about like, uh, can murder be right? You know what I mean? Can killing a person be the right thing to do? And my answer is always a steadfast no. It can be justifiable in some instances, right? But it's never right because then you halt the existence of something that has the potential to change. Weird sidebar. I apologize, but I don't know why. Yeah, was like, yeah. yeah, we just got really morbid. That's all. It's cool. It's cool. Whatever. Uh, <laughs> okay, next question comes from uh, Jan, right? We had Jan on the show the other day, and also I think he might be a part of the Super Show. We'll have to see. Uh, he wants to know, and we answered a question kind of similar to this, but not exactly. It had to do with a lot more people. He wants to know... Uh, if you could meet any famous person, it can be a YouTuber or fellow podcaster as well. He wants to know what's the question you would ask them and how do you think they would answer it? So I see what he did here. He, he got very interesting with it. He's trying to flip this Q and a, you know, he's trying to flip the question time. 
to us asking questions and then answering how we think they would uh, answer the questions. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, questionception, man. So it has to be a famous person? Yes. And they can, is it an alive or dead situation? I'm going to say alive or dead. All right. <sighs> I would, uh, I would, my question would be for Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs? What yeah. would you ask him? If uh, Apple Corporation has uh, become more of what he wanted it to be or less of what he wanted it to be. And I think the answer would be less of what he wanted it to be. Interesting. I really do. Yeah. You know, this is a totally uh, side, you know, side note, but I read an article the other day of people's last words. Steve, Steve Jobs was a uh, pretty, pretty uh, upsetting. I guess his final words were, please don't leave me. Please don't leave me. Yeah, man, that's just like tug, tug on my heartstrings, <laughs> you know, like, ugh. <laughs> and then but, Siri popped on and was like, sorry, I didn't catch that. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, that was bad. No, no joke, joke, joke after that one. Oh, yeah, that's dude. rough. Siri does suck. Uh, mine, mine would be, ooh, this is a good question, especially when you factor in alive or dead, right? I think mine would probably be for mm, cue the Jeopardy music. <laughs> um, uh, oh, I got it. Douglas Adams. Oh, classic. He took it to the grave on what it really meant, man. Life, the universe, and everything else. He only told one person. Okay, well, I, wa I want to hear it from him himself. And I think I would ask him what he thinks, you know, my typical question, I would ask him what he thinks the meaning of life would be, right? And ultimately, I think he'd give me the 42 answer, but he would probably explain, maybe, if he doesn't, just to be able to have that dude tell me 42, I would be equally as satisfied, <laughs> you know? I would. I wish I was at a computer right now because you mentioned to me the thing where you said like uh, 42 is how a computer would answer the question, right? Mm -hmm. And I read some sort of thing where like, I don't know, I can't remember the gist of it, but it does explain how 42 would be the answer a computer would give because of like something about code or something like that and, and how it essentially means, I believe what you always say and that life is what you make it. Mm -hmm. so that was interesting I wish I could remember that more specifically um, yeah, man Douglas Adams would be a great one you know who also would be good as any any of the, the ancient philosophers um, would be fantastic yeah yeah that, that would be awesome I think Douglas Adams would be awesome uh, personally my second choice would probably be idea uh, I'm trying to find the article that you mentioned, but I can't find it. I'll have to find something more on it, and we'll have to go into a deeper conversation with it next time we're on. But uh, let's see. The next question. Are you done with this uh, matter? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Next one comes from David Corona, and he would like to know, who would win in a fight, Steven Seagal or a random drunk? What? Steven Seagal. Steven Seagal. I mean, how random is the drunk? And how well can the drunk fight? <laughs> you know? I guess. Are we talking like current age Steven Seagal? Because I'm pretty sure he's still kind of a badass. I think we're talking current age. I mean, unless the drunk guy was like a random drunk who just happened to, to get hammered after studying martial arts for 40 years. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I think uh, Steven Seagal would probably get it in almost all scenarios. Yeah, because I swear to God, I was just watching a video on Reddit the other day where he was at a martial arts competition and he got bored, so they let him compete against some of the people in the competition, and he took on, like, three people and beat all their asses, like, at once. Ugh. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, 
Death you know Punch. what I heard today? What's that? I heard a rumor that Bruce Lee was like a phony. Could be. You'd never know. Yeah, well, I mean, I just wanted to open it for discussion for like one minute because did you ever hear this? I've heard that like no one's ever seen him fight in real life and like the one inch punch thing was bullshit. So, well, I'm pretty sure the one inch punch thing was bullshit. I'm pretty sure that was just for like movies and shit. I mean, it could be real. There, There's some crazy stuff that people can do, man. For sure. But yeah, but also what kind of Asian dude's name is Bruce? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> that that would be like an English dude's uh, name being Ming. Exactly. You don't see it. You don't see it often. Uh, I mean, you could uh, be in one of those situations where it's like John dies at the end and the uh, main character's name is like, what is it, John Wong or something? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't know. But uh, <clears throat> yeah, so we only have two questions left. This, I told you this is going to be a shorter episode. But uh, right. the next question comes you know, for directly you, right? And it is coming from Kara, and she wants to know, what is Devin's den? Kara who? I'm not going to say her last name. She didn't supply one. I'm not going to say it. Okay. Well, mysterious Kara, Devin's den is a new... Know her. I know her? Yes. Personally? Maybe. Just answer the question. <laughs> Devin's Den is a new show. Eventually, it's in production right now. Coming to Casey's Corner. Um, Nestor Network. Like, yeah, yeah, the Nestor Network. I'm sorry. Um, when we feel like it's polished up and ready to go, and it's going to cover um, some interesting topics. Uh, the main thing that's slowing us down right now is, I think, some of... The uh, the topics that I was going to cover might be um, something that's getting covered in another niche show that's coming on the Nestor Network. So really, we're just trying to figure out like the scope of the topics I want to cover. And that, after that's that, only going to be like a sub cover, though. So you're still good to like cover the uh, philosophy stuff. All right. Well, I mean, yeah, so the philosophy is going to be a thing. Um, that's probably going to be the main one. Um, but also just just a lot of uh, a lot of um um trying to think how to put this a lot of more serious topics it's going to be a little bit more educational it's going to be very interesting so yeah that's that's devin's den it's going to be coming to the nestor network uh when, when, people expect when, to see that. when it's ready i'm not gonna i'm not gonna put a date on it uh for two reasons one i don't want to have to um i don't want to have to put it out before it's something that we're sure about um in terms of its quality right a but b I'm starting some, uh, I'll have more of an idea tomorrow, literally tomorrow morning. When, well, I guess so. If you're watching this tomorrow morning, I'll have a better idea in the, like in an hour or so. Um, because I'm starting a new job tomorrow and I get it. it it's yeah. Thanks. Thanks to the creator of the Nestor network. Right. He, he got me the, the link on a decent job and, um, I'm pretty sure I'm going to talk to them about scheduling tomorrow. So, once yeah, that, definitely got to figure that out, especially for koi ponds and llamas. So, yeah, exactly. And I think that I can definitely make sure that that happens. So, <clears throat> but soonish, I'm gonna I'm gonna say a couple months max. We'll have, uh, but it's in it's yeah. in the rough it's in the rough rough draft phase right now. Hmm. Well, we actually just got one more question in from Anthony. Uh, Anthony. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, you yeah. Interesting. I don't know if I even want to ask this, but you know what? Yeah, let's just ask it anyway. Here we go. He wants to know if you had to pick one religion to follow, what would you pick and why? Absolutely none of them because I'm not an idiot. No, I'm just kidding. It's a joke. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> it's a joke, joke, joke. joke, 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 joke. We should yeah. just end the episode with like that blank uh, expression on your face, like. If uh, you had to pick one religion to follow, and why would would you pick? And you're like, in the episode just ends. <laughs> That'd be fantastic. No, this is gonna be a super weird answer for a lot of people, but um, my my I'm... answer is super weird too. So don't worry. Yeah. My answer is okay. So like, I'm gonna have two answers. One for like more non traditional religions, I'm gonna pick one, and then one for traditional religions. All right. 
Yep. So traditional religion, I would pick Catholicism. Here's why. Altar boys are so cute. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> sorry, Casey. You, you asked a question. No, uh, because um, the, what, what I like about it is, one, the monotheistic God that they have that exists as an absolute being has a lot of uh, philosophical uh, strapping down that they've done that makes it not so um, unbelievable to me, even though I'm not a religious person. <sighs> but also... Their masses, like the when they when they're doing the mass, it's not all willy nilly. Every Catholic church on earth has the same mass on the same day at the same time. The churches are built in a certain way. There's just a lot of order there that other religions don't see. So that's neato. Now, for non traditional religions, I would definitely, definitely be a believer in the force. Force, because when you think about it, right, it's not. <laughs> It's not that crazy of a concept. It's just Pretty literally. Sure it's called Jediism, too. Yeah, right. The universe is connected by the force. It flows through all of us. It works through all of us. It's pretty much just like a great cosmic energy that Jedi and Sith happen to be able to tap into. And so, if I was to believe in like sort of like a more, you know, a strange religion, it would be that. So for me, well, let let, let me start off by you know clarifying here. I may not be religious, right? But I'm still one of the most spiritual people you would ever meet. And they don't have to be connected. Yeah, you often see that uh, spirituality is connected with religion. But, like, you know, I'm a pretty spiritual person. I feel like everything that happens in the universe is meant to happen. And everything ultimately leads to something else. And I put my faith in believing that, uh, you know, the universe will work everything out in the end. Like, it ultimately has a like uh agenda that it's following by and we just have to be a part of it and kind of move with it opposed to like stand there and like try to stop it so i'm a pretty spiritual person you know however if i had to pick a religion to follow of the religions that are like here i would probably go with like ancient greek religion honestly worship the old gods worship the aliens man personally like a uh uh, uh, polytheism, mm-hmm. multiple gods that have human-like qualities and and go through dr- dra- drama and things of that nature. Yeah, yep. yes, because that seems kind of fun, right? Like, this is fun to do. See, here's my. Well, issue. you have a god to pray to for everything, too. It's like, That's... oh, I'm about I'm about to go to war. I'm gonna pray to Ares. Like, <laughs> I'm about to go out on the sea. Better pray to Poseidon. Uh, you, you know, so like I, I like that concept of like multiple people to pray to. Hmm. Hmm. I like that, Casey. But see, I just never mind. <laughs> Greek, the, I, like, the, I don't know. The Greek gods just made sense to me. No, that's cool. I think. But see, I like that because you, you have something that's more of a subject or an individual thing, and then you. It's almost like like when you pray to like the god of war, the god of the sea, or you know, um, the god of festivals. It's almost like you're putting goodwill for the thing that you're doing, or the thing that you're sailing on, or the thing that you're performing into the ether, right? You know, so that makes a lot of sense to me. Yeah, absolutely. We have one final question. Yes, the hot topic. Don't- Wait, hold up. Let me just add a disclaimer here. I was just kidding, by the way, when I when I made my very first comment about religion. I truly do think that me not being a religious person has something to do with the narcissistic tendencies we were talking about earlier. But it's also something that I would need significant overwhelming evidence to ever have change. Unless, of course, you're a Jedi, then please contact me. Um, so, man, <laughs> the, thing, the, thing with, the thing with religion for me is, uh, you know, I'm open to all of it. I'm a very open-minded person. And I'm not saying any of it is wrong. What I'm saying is I personally don't believe in it, but I do believe in the possibility of it existing. And uh, that that's just myself. You know, some people put their faith in other religions, and that's okay, too. Uh, you, can't, you can't let religion divide us, just like you can't no, let... Uh, I completely agree. Yeah, you can't let those kind of things divide us. We're all yeah, good. whatever you want to... Whatever you want to practice, as long as it's making you a better person or is giving you some sort of hope in this world, that's cool. That's great. You should definitely do that. I'm not trying to shit on anybody who is religious because if it's something that brings you joy or serenity or 
any other sort of virtuous behavior, do it. By all means. Exactly. Moving on to the last question. It comes from Liz Singer. And she wants to know, and this is a very hot topic. Is water wet? Uh, so this, yeah, I remember seeing stuff about this, um, uh, on the internet throughout the past, and I just, I don't even know how to, the answer is yes. Water is what? Yes, it's fucking water, for the love of God. I, I mean, do you remember the original videos that came out about this, Casey? Did you ever see any of them? Uh-uh. It's, it's literally like a bunch of stoners, and they're like, yeah, but like, is water wet, man? Because when something's wet, it's like not in water anymore. It just got some water on it, but the water's what's making it wet, bro. Exactly. Exactly, Devin. It's the water that is making it wet. Water cannot be wet. Water is the source of something that is making something else wet, right? <laughs> so, like... If I were to, okay, so this monster, for example, if I stick my finger in it right now, now my finger is wet. But when my finger is in it, it is, you know, it, yeah, it's, it's wet, wet, but something is making it wet. Right now, inside of this can, it's not wet. It's a liquid, right? Only two things exist on this, like in this, uh, in on this world that make uh, something wet. And that is like water, liquid, or me. How you doing? So that is the only thing. I've been waiting to make that joke this whole time, you bastard. <laughs> that that's my personal thing on it, man. Like I, I don't think water itself is wet. I think water makes things wet. So you're saying something can only be wet when it has water on it, right? And so it's not that the water is wet, but the item that's coated in a slight amount of yes. water, what we're describing is yes. wet. Water is water. Okay. So water. on a molecular level, right? Right. You oh, got all here we go. Here we go. Yeah. Here yeah. we go. <laughs> you have all these hydrogen and oxygen molecules just sitting bitch. around being combined, right? Is this molecule wet because it's surrounded by other water molecules? Next question. Yes. According <laughs> to this, which means water is wet. Oh, man. The government's trying to shut us down right now. Your video just for this. <laughs> they're like, the they're on to us. Water is wet. To... They're on to us. <laughs> oh. So you think water is wet. I think water is not wet. Water makes things wet. Interesting. <laughs> Civil War. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Devin, I think, uh, you know, that's all the questions we've had submitted that are suitable for asking on this show. Uh, do you have any personal questions for me? Yeah, what questions were submitted that aren't suitable for this show, though? I didn't write them down. Actually, no, there is one more question that was suitable for this show. I'm not sure why. What happened to the... Was it on the back of this? Oh, yeah, there's still one more question. So sorry, guys. Uh, the next one comes from Rainy McCain. She wants to know, if you had to rename yourself, what would you name? Like, what would you rename yourself as if you had to? If I had to rename myself, what would my name be? Yep. Oh, that's, 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 oh man, I'm getting, am I, is our quality so good? Because I'm getting a bunch of stuff that says poor connection. Yeah, you're good. I would rename myself. Um, I don't know, dude. I like the name Devin. I like kind of what it means. Am I a narcissist? Maybe. Hell, I've even dated a Devin. Like, <laughs> but um, I think I would change my name to something older, like way older. What? Like, we're I don't know. Like, I have to, I'm sorry. This, this, all these questions are like... You're talking like, like fucking like, Prometheus? Would you rename me? Yeah, yeah. I'm talking like ancient Greek. Like, like... Prometheus. Yeah. I, no, I'm going to name all my future kids after ancient Greeks. Mm. Like, come here, uh, Perseus. <laughs> Athena! Don't touch that. 
Yeah, exactly. Now you understand what I'm saying. No, um, I don't know. There are names that I used to think were really cool. Oh, I'd name myself Lincoln. I like the name Lincoln. Lincoln. You look like a Lincoln. You could probably pull that off. Yeah, thank you. No, you're not gonna you're not gonna do an assassination joke. Okay. Mm-hmm. Moving on. <laughs> I was I was really waiting for an assassination joke, but you never you never did one. Yeah, you know me. I don't joke about assassinations. <laughs> I just carry them out. No, I'm just kidding. Oh my god. Uh, for me, that's easy. Uh, Cassidy. I was like the name Cassidy. I would rename myself Cassidy. Uh, yeah. This would be Cassidy's Corner. Hint, hint. <laughs> oh, man. That's like five shadowing. That's like a step beyond. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or maybe yeah. it's a step before four shadowing. So it's like three shadowing. I don't know. Shadow. How shadowing seven, Mary, three shadowing. Ooh, I was six shadowing. Afraid of seven shadowing. <laughs> Because seven, eight, nine shadowing. Exactly. <laughs> that, that is all the questions we have. Do you have any more questions for me? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. What's up? What's your favorite hair color? Uh, brunette. I didn't mean... Okay. All right. On you. On me? Uh, current <laughs> the, the shit that i have now whatever it is brown blonde whatever so if you um, could dye your hair any color you wouldn't do it i might go like blonde cut my hair real short dye it blonde like real slim shady yeah yeah you know, i don't i don't know i i maybe black i would go i've done black before it looks weird on me it's the only time i ever dyed my hair dyed to black because i used to be so emo but uh, i i once uh when i was like in high school i got uh my tips frosted if you know what he means <laughs> yeah giggity um yeah so that was really weird i look like fucking uh guy ferrari <laughs> <laughs> did you start saying a bunch of weird catchphrases yeah, like, i did time? yeah yeah like i'd walk up to people and i'd be like hello fine young people of the universe <laughs> Welcome to Flavor Town. <laughs> Welcome to Flavor Town. How you doing? Oh man. Um I would do gray. Gray? I think I'd go gray. Going for that dead but delicious look. Mm-hmm. That silver fox look. Silver fox. Ooh, that's a good question from me to you. Speaking of that, uh, Devin, what's your spirit animal? I don't even know if you've ever sought out your spirit animal, but if you have, what is your spirit animal? Uh, so I feel like a spirit animal is something that can evolve over time as mm-hmm. your personality and who you are changes and grows. And my spirit animal used to be a rabbit because when rabbits get nervous, they just run. That's why it's so hard to catch a rabbit because when they run, they don't pick a direction and run. They literally, their body just tells them to turn randomly and dart in random directions. That way it's unfair. Especially in Minecraft. Have you ever tried to catch a rabbit in Minecraft? <laughs> Shit's hard. And so, oh, uh, and so that was me for the longest time. I was just running in random directions, not really understanding. or ha- I didn't have a rhyme or reason to what I was doing. I was just running to run. Um, now I'm sort of um, doing things differently. I really don't know what my spirit animal would be. You need to seek that guy out. I sought mine out a couple months ago. <clears throat> it's a fox. I don't know why it's a fox, but every time I went on that quest to find my spirit animal, I always saw a fox. How do you go on such a quest? I'll send you some videos. We'll find your spirit animal. We'll find. Okay. Some people just know what their spirit animal is. Like, like you said, you just knew yours was a rabbit. But like for me, like I never really knew what my uh, spirit animal was. I used to always tell people, I'm like, yeah, my spirit animal is a great white shark swimming mm-hmm. through the ocean. So misunderstood. That and I used to always dream of great whites, you know. But um, yeah, like, like me. Yeah. How you doing? <laughs> but that is uh, all we have time for, man. Do you have any closing regards? No, I just said I love you and I love everyone that watches this show. And you should say the words "love" to your friends more often, like Casey posted about on Facebook the other day. If yes, you check it takes nothing out of you to just say "I love you, bro." Yeah, Nothing. spread love, spread positivity. Yeah, people That's still get easy. weird with it. They're like, "I love ya." They they refuse to throw the "you" word after. <laughs> you oh, ever they, noticed that? Yeah, they you, don't like putting you. "you." Yeah, it'll be like, "I love ya," "ya." Yeah, they won't say "you." That's a cop out. 
Yeah, it is a cop out. Just commit your love to your friends, man. <laughs> yeah, man. Love everyone, man. But that is all we have time for here on Question Time with Casey and Devin. Thank you so much for those of you who submitted questions. Uh, we will be doing another one of these next week. So go ahead and submit those questions in if you want them to be answered by the Answer Masters, Casey and Devin. That's not what we're going to call ourselves. We'll work Thanks. on it. <laughs> <laughs> but we will see you guys next time on Question Time with Casey and Devin. What do you guys Cue that new logo that Josh Nichols set us.